Hey, hello, good morning. This video will be about season 14, what you can expect in the new season and what you should look forward to. It's gonna be a little bit of a guide on maybe what to abuse and what to play when the season starts. The video will contain me yapping a lot and showing cases of gameplay, but I mean, this by no any means is 100% correct. Some things may still change. This video is being recorded uh, literally one day before New Year, so Riot still make, maybe will make some changes before the new season comes out, but there's a high chance that a new season will come out as it is currently on the tournament server, and uh, as Propolis have been playing on tournament server for a while now, uh, we have uh, tested all the new changes and can give you some steps on what to expect in new season. Um, again, might be a little bit chaotic, it's not scripted, I'm just gonna be talking about my feelings about the new season, uh, season 14. So, let's start, I, I suppose, by g with ganking. I think ganking overall uh, will be harder, I think lanes will be much, much safer. I feel like it's actually harder to do anything as a jungler nowadays, I mean... Okay, this, this sounds like jungler crying, I think jungler still has huge impact on the game. I think Jungle's play is still the most important role in solo queue. That being said, ganking will be made more difficult and because of that I think farming junglers will be stronger. Of course, keep in mind if you are playing in gold and people just don't care about jungle, they will still die to jungle gang. So don't worry my fellow junglers, you can still definitely gank all the lanes and people will still die. But especially mid lane, I think it's harder to gank. I think bot lane with two pings and top lane with one ping, uh, if they are having push, much much easier to cover. I overall feel like lane ganking will become more popular nowadays so if you are playing in season 14 and you don't know how to start i would definitely consider lane ganking as uh, that didn't change much but i think ganking through river is definitely much much harder so i do think junglers will have a harder time and prioritizing champions that are good at clearing will definitely help you out then the next thing <clears throat> that brings me to laning well i suppose ganking and laning is kind of the same thing but i mean I would say laning will be made easier in a way, not because your lane opponent is gonna be worse, you still have to outplay them, but again, if you cover your lane with one trinket in the river, or if you make sure to know enemy jungle starts, it's gonna be easier to avoid jungle ganks, so you can focus on winning your lane way more than you did in the past, especially my fellow top laners playing on the red side, it is not easy to dive that tower, there's a giant massive wall protecting you, so well, I mean, if triple will go top, I'm sorry, but you are just getting team gap, not much you can do, that being said, if you are one-on-one -on -one and you are a punishing your lane opponent and you are like Zeus and you are <coughs> like Wunder and you are dominating, you should probably try to use a pink ward in the little pixel brush and everything is gonna be uh, much easier for you and you can definitely protect yourself from jungle ganks. Next one is Void Grabs, the only new object, well I suppose Nashor is also changed but let's start with the Void, void Grabs. I think the Void Grabs objective is very very powerful. So first of all it gives you same XP as if doing jungle camps. That being said they are definitely harder to do than Drakes unless you can solo them with few champions that don't lose HP like Nocturne for example. Nocturne benefits quite a lot from them spawning little minions and Nocturne passive procs and then Nocturne gets healed, right? But a lot of champions will definitely struggle to do void grabs alone. If you can pull all of them all together and do that at the same time, that's the easiest. But even if you kill only one of them, a shield will pop and uh, the, the other two will be harder to kill and then the last one again will be harder to kill after the second to last dies. So Void Grabs is a huge objective, it gives true damage to the towers, it applies a damage over time effect, so uh, even if you hit tower once, it's gonna have some value in it. That being said, if you only get from one to four Void Grabs, it's not gonna make a huge difference, but if you get five or six void grabs, you will spawn a little minions, little extra minions when you auto a tower or even sometimes when you auto a dragon, I've seen them spawn and run to lane. So you spawn extra minions, you, you can kind of call them ghouls similar to Yorick. What do they do? They give a little bit of XP to enemy team if killed, but that's not important. What's important is that they tank tower shots and they also help you to uh, break the tower down. These little void grabs, each one of them gives you about I believe six damage for a melee champion and three damage for a range champion over time dot effect on the tower when you hit it over three seconds. So you do six damage over three seconds as a melee for one. If you get four of them, well, you can easily calculate that you'll be going around, uh, I believe 24 damage per auto over three seconds. But if you get more of them, you'll be doing definitely much more damage to the tower, but also these little minions or these little ghouls will help you to break the tower down. I think that's the biggest change because if you get from five to six, it's gonna help you 
know about the game so so much you'll be able to easily break down enemy towers you'll be able to easily siege things down so i do think if you can focus on the objective early and you can kill them on spawn the spawn by the way is four minutes they are a super 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 strong objective and you will definitely see uh, a lot of people fight over them during the lac or other tournaments unless they get nerfed they are i would say probably one of the best objectives in the game outside of baron nash right now then the next thing is if hell now if you summon it you can ride it if you ride it into a tower it's gonna do damage it's gonna do less damage than before but it's still gonna do damage and it's gonna spawn a bunch of the voidlings the voidlings are still gonna attack the tower i think the biggest change about the herald is that you can ride it like signal so if you jump into it you can technically go from let's say river to bot lane or top lane you can even rotate from mid to bot it's a bit hard it's tricky because you have a limited amount of time that you can spend inside of the herald but you can do that by the way if you miss the tower and let's say you break the herald onto the wall the herald will not automatically charge into the tower so you need to make sure you hit the tower like the scion old wood besides that whoever hits herald gets assist on it and gets empowered recall before only the person who got herald got the empowered recall now everyone who hit it once gets the empowered recall the next thing is baron nashor baron on Nashor, um, the fight is harder, it does more damage, it's more tanky. Overall, I would say quite nice change. I think it was too easy to take in season 13. By the end of season, they buffed it, but before that, it was very easy to take. And uh, well, the fight wasn't so epic. Now I think I think the fight is more epic. The animations are cooler, and also it has I think three different layouts that it can slightly change the map to. So definitely an interesting objective. I think that'll be for the map changes. Uh, I mean, of course, you will get used to them as you play. I think they are very interesting. I think it's uh, way easier to invade enemy jungle camps uh, as well it's something i didn't cover but um i mean if you watch my stream you'll probably know but yeah anyway i think uh, i think it's huge changes to the map for junglers definitely a lot will change uh, invading is even better winning lane is even better as long as you put your trinkets please do that my laners please put trinkets um so you will have to get used to the season changes i think all of them are very interesting that brings me to the next big point which is items a lot of items got removed and a lot of items got added or added back to the game as you may know <laughs> my lovely putarizer is back but but besides that, my friends, two best bruiser items, we are gonna start with bruisers, are removed. Gordinker and Sander. If you are a Jax abuser in the top lane, like me, or if you are a Wukong player, or if you are a Lee Sin player, all these items will really, really, really make the champs weaker. So, <clears throat> let me rephrase. Gordinker was really OP, Sander was very OP too. So, with these two items removed, bruisers took a big hit. The new bruiser items are not bad, not great. Depends what you build. I would say that overall, when we are at the items, Riot Games decided to remove a lot of ability haste from the game, both for mages, for bruisers, for supports. Every class really will have overall less ability haste, which, well, makes things more interesting. I think mages will get more damage, but we will get into that soon. Uh, for bruisers, I really like the new Hydra. Titanic Hydra uh, gives you a lot of good stats. Uh, well, it's not a new item, it's slightly changed. It gives you auto reset, so on champions that benefit from fast auto attack is gonna be good, like Zen Zhao, like Jax. Uh, you can maybe even build it on champions like Trandlo. There is also an item that gives you crit and some missing health region when you auto someone for the first time with a cooldown. That item will also be good for bruisers. I believe the name of the item is Sundered Sky. Anyway, I think bruisers suffer the most because Gore Drinker and Sander again will be getting removed. So you will have to experiment the build. For champions like Lee Sin, I like doing the Sundered Sky. I like doing Black Cleaver. I like doing Spear of Shujin. So some of the items will still stay the same, even though the effects are a bit changed. But I think champions like Graves, for example, that benefit from building creed and lethality will be stronger and that kind of moves me on to the next i suppose class i want to close bruisers here because bruisers will still try to build hp ad ability haste but there's less options and you will have to figure out things out by yourself that being said the more po the most popular items for laners are hydra uh, the titanic hydra and for junglers mostly uh, people build in at least the pro server at uh, the standard sky black cleaver speed of shujin okay that moves me on to lethality items i think lethality items are stronger as well there's more options to them. Uh, I believe that there's no huge changes. I mean, Duskblade is still Duskblade. Uh, I think Eclipse is changed. It doesn't give you ability haste anymore, or maybe I'm wrong, but I think it doesn't. Let's just say I'm not that knowledgeable about Assassins, because no one plays Assassins on the tournament server. So, there is definitely more lethality items, and there's more options to build them, but, I mean, I, I at least I think Assassins will have a lot of fun to experiment, and I think Assassins as a class will definitely benefit from new season changes. Quite shortly, again, because I don't have a lot of experiences, and I don't think Assassins are as nerfed as Bruce. I think Bruiser goes the biggest hit. The next thing is AP champions overall. I think AP items are completely busted. I think yeah, AP champs are mega OP. <laughs> 
big OP. There are so many good items. Champions like control mages will be strong. Well, actually control mages took a bigger hit as uh, some of the items, for example, Landris is way weaker. So technically killing tanks will be harder. Again, we will get into that soon. But lethality or AP assassins will be much stronger. Champs like Akali are going 20 kills every single game in pro games. It's completely crazy. Silas is so strong. Some of the control mages are still strong, like Azir, like Oriana, like Victor. So I'm sure there will be a niche for everyone. But I would say overall that if you are AP lover, be it AP junglers or AP mid laners or AP top laners, oh, you will love the changes. Please make sure you abuse Storm Surge. Please make sure you abuse the new Death Cap. You can even build Banshee and Banshee now gives you 120 AP, even though it's a defensive item. Wow. I mean, I think AP items are, are completely insane. Again, less ability haste, but overall a lot of more AP on the items and I'm I'm sure you love the changes. The next thing is tanks. Tanks probably, I mean, I honestly don't have that much experience because I haven't been playing that many tanks uh, myself, but I've seen some tanks being unkillable. There is a lot of new tank items and you can still build Titanic Hydra for damage. So I do think tanks will be stronger overall. Champs like Scion, for example, champs like Kas... <laughs> Cassante, for example, will be still strong. So yes, tanks will have nothing to, to be afraid of. You can still play tank stop. In fact, it's gonna be harder to kill tanks because Hullbreaker is changed a lot and it doesn't give you armor uh, and magic resist anymore to the split pusher. It's, it's a different item. So right now, if you play bruisers, like let's say Jax or Camille, you cannot build Sanderer, you cannot go Hullbreaker. So you could even argue that AP top laners like Rumble Cannon or other whatever you can play top uh, will be even stronger and tanks uh, can can also be stronger due to against Sunder removal, which was anti-tank item. Well, you have other anti-tank items nowadays, but you know, for now at least, I think early season tanks will be strong. Then the last class um, that I believe I should cover is supports. I think supports benefit from changes a lot. Uh, you cannot really abuse level one anymore uh, because the support item is active a bit later, but you can still finish it at 1000 gold. And now you uh, need to buy the upgrade in the base. So please remember when you, my, my fellow supports, because people were really forgetting, when you have a thousand gold, you need to base and then buy your upgrade. You can buy multiple upgrades. Some of them do extra damage. Some of them proc press the attack kind of for AD supports like Senna. Some of them do extra damage like um, kind of like Heimerdinger or Zyra or whatever damage supports I don't know Velvet whatever you play do extra extra damage and I think the new support items are actually stronger than the old ones I mean they give way more power than the old ones the old ones would actually give no effect they would just give you golden wars now these ones give you effects and the effects are completely busted so I think that would be it if you have any questions please make sure to uh, comment down below I will try to make some time in a new video you can also see gameplays of new season on my channel I think that uh, there is plenty of gameplays uh, i mean hopefully uh, my editor took a break <coughs> and that's why there was no videos but uh now he's back and he's definitely uploading videos as we speak so you will have a lot of gameplays from new season on my channel again not on pbe not where people are first timing but instead where the highest level of competition is being played on tournament server along europeans elite you could say uh, even though we are all boosted compared to korea and china <clears throat> anyway hope you enjoyed it uh if you have any questions about how the game plays or about the items or about item builds make sure to leave comment down below maybe i'll make an extra video just answering this so that people can be truly truly prepared for season 14 I can tell you IRDM, I can't wait for AC to start. I'm sure I'm gonna smurf and I will see you next time. Have a lovely evening.